Hi, I'm Sean Clark, and welcome to another episode of The Collection. Today we're going to focus on Halloween 3, Season of the Witch. There was not much merchandise for this film at all, because it was technically a flop. This is a film that has gained momentum and fan love over the last decade. And I'm proud to say I kind of had a little hand in, in helping build that uh, and championing it, if you will. And Tom Lee Wallace credits me that in his book. If you haven't seen his new book, I highly recommend you go get it. It's out now. You can get it on Amazon.com. It's about the making of Halloween 3. I believe it's called Where the Hell is Michael Myers? The Making of Halloween 3. Anywho, I have obtained a few things over the years. We'll start up here with the masks. Obviously, this all starts with the masks. Now, this skull and this witch are both original Dompo Studios, um, the store-bought versions. Basically, the store-bought versions are the same as the screen used, really, because it was Dompo Studios where they did the interiors of the mask factory and stuff, and those are the same masks they used in the movies, the same ones they were selling in the store. And back in the day, they didn't do too many. Uh, the Skull and Witch were both existing masks in the Dom Post line. Uh, the Skull has gone through many different colors. Um, the Witch was also a different color. It was known as Hagatha. They just gave them both a special paint job for Halloween 3. The Pumpkin was the only one actually made for Halloween 3, specifically sculpted for Halloween 3. Now, this Pumpkin is a screen-used mask. This one was used in the film. The other two were not. One thing that's really cool about this, I don't know if you can get a shot of it or not, but that's the original tag and the original silver shamrock tag that came with the mask. You see it's, it's unperforated. Finding them like that unperforated because most people popped them off, stuck them on the back of their masks or threw them away or whatever, but that's the original tag uh, from that mask, which is really cool to have. Now, I used to have a mask company called Silver Champagne Novelties, which was obviously a play on Silver Shamrock Novelties from Halloween 3. And we did a signature series of all three of these masks, molded uh, off the originals, and Tommy Lee's... Tommy Lee, not Molly Crew, Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee Wallace, his signature was added uh, onto, the, onto each mask uh, as part of the mold. So it was like basically in latex, uh, embossed on the mask. Uh, I believe on the skull, it was on the back. On the witch, it was on the top of the head, which was hidden by the uh, the cloak. And on the pumpkin, it was also on the back. Uh, we only did 30 of each of those. Those are very rare. Uh, I believe I just saw a set on eBay just like a few days ago. Somebody sent me a link to ask me if they were legit, and they were. And it was a set of three for like, it was like $2,500. So... Nice to know that something we did still has value. We had COAs for each of them. Tommy Lee Wall signed all of those, uh, as did I. And uh, I think it was either it was Brad Harden or Darren Roberts. I can't remember who worked on those specifically. But uh, I will say each one of our masks came with our own Silver Shamrock Novelties tag. But what made ours cool was, you know, we did the the microchips. Now, I kept saying to Trick or Treat Studios, you guys got to do the microchips. Well, unfortunately, they just recently lost the uh, the license uh, to Halloween 3. So I don't know who's going to be producing these anymore, if anybody else is going to be producing these down the line. But so far, nobody's done the microchips except us. Pretty cool, I think. So those are the original ones. Now that there, that was fan-made. Uh, head of Connell Cochran was made by an artist named Daniel Horn and I believe there was only six made That's I recall seeing one that said one of six. I don't know what number mine is I thought he did a really good job on it and it fits perfectly there with the trio The skull is always going to be in pristine condition because unlike the pumpkin and the witch they cast the skull in a vinyl so that vinyl it doesn't deteriorate uh, like the latex does. The latex begins to start to rot, harden. You know, every once in a while you get lucky and it'll it'll rot in a, and harden in a good way. Uh, like, for example, 
my Kirk, which is hard and looks pristine, but this one's starting to look, you know, they start to get weird and start warping and stuff. And there's people like Tom Spina out there that, you know, can help restore things. It's a lot of money to invest in trying to save latex or foam latex. I mean, it's foam and, and liquid latex, rubber. Uh, eventually they all rot. So kind of a bummer. Anyway, Halloween 3. Let's talk about some rare Halloween 3 items. I'm not going to get into all. There's so much merchandise now for Halloween 3. It's kind of out of control. But I do have a couple of these, which is pretty nice. Let me show you this. Whoops. This was already open. So this right here, the Silver Shamrock Novelties. This was a crew mug that Tommy Lee Wallace gave to the crew. Uh, I believe this one, let's see, I marked, I think I marked, marked them, let's see, because I got two of them. Aha, yes, I marked them. Otherwise, I would have never known which one came from who. So this one, Tommy Lee Wallace personally gave me as a gift. Uh, back when I first met him, when I went to his house to uh, record the interview for Halloween 25 Years of Terror documentary, he gave this to me as a gift. This one says Garn on the bottom. This one I obtained from Garn Stevens, who recently passed away. I was able to get this from her son, uh, who had a couple of her personal items. And uh, so this was her copy uh, of her crew mug. Garn Stevens played Marge Gutman. She's the one who got shot in the mouth with the laser. So anyway, as you can see, pretty sweet. Many thanks, Tommy Lee. Many thanks, Tommy Lee. Halloween 3, 1982. A lot of people don't know him. In 82, he made a great first album, Too Fast for Love, and made a great movie. There was also another very rare crew gift. I only know one other person, Billy Kirkus, owns one. Otherwise, I didn't even know this thing existed. This also came from Garden Stevens. This is... A little Halloween 3 tote bag. This was her personal copy. See if I can, there we go. Get a little better there. It's a tiny ass little bag. It's also cool that it actually has the number 3 and not, you know, the line, 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 like you always see the Roman numeral 3, but actually the number 3. Think about how old this is. It's in really good condition. You know, for a bag that's, how old is that, 42 years? Is that about right? 42? 82? Two, uh, yeah, roughly 42 years ago. Am I right? I think I'm right. <laughs> yes, I'm right. <laughs> trying to do math. I'm not good at math. I'm good at horror. <laughs> so if I could have any prop from Halloween 3, it would probably be... Um, you know the scene where the woman is sitting there knitting and her head comes off and it's like a robot head? That lady's robot head would be kind of cool. You know, why not? Or the or I think there was a robot head of Stacy Nelkin when she gets her head lopped off. That that would be a pretty cool piece done. Or any of those the silver shamrock boxes. Those would be kind of neat. The ones that were in the factory. One of the coolest things that I was involved in with Halloween 3. Uh, when we did the 45 Years of Terror convention, I had an idea to do a Tom Atkins Dr. Chalice figure. My original idea was to approach Randy at NECA, who I knew had the license to Halloween 3 and had already previously done a Tom Atkins figure with the Night of the Creeps figure. I wanted to do a two-pack of Atkins or Chalice and Stacy Nelkin's character of Ellie. Now, I thought that would have been cool, but unfortunately, the thing that takes the longest when it comes to doing these toys is the sculpting of the head, the likeness, uh, the tooling. Um, it, it can take a long time. So we had an advantage with the fact that they had done this Night of the Creeps figure right here. So since this was already previously available by NECA, Literally all we had to do was change the outfit and the packaging. 
and you have a Dr. Chalice figure. Now, when I went into this deal with NECA, it was risky. I mean, because if this thing didn't sell, I was going to get stuck with a thousand of these things. A thousand. I mean, I remember thinking to myself, where the hell would I store these? And how much space a thousand of these take? It's a lot. When I saw the box, when I saw the giant, you know, crates that were delivered to the convention, my dumb ass was thinking, oh, have them delivered to my house. And Nathan from Whorehound's like, dude, are you crazy? Have them delivered to the convention. And after thinking more about it, I'm like, yeah, yeah, you're right. And that was the right call. Thanks, Nate. So anyway... This was the result of my brainstorm, my idea. And yes, of course I have number one because it's my damn idea. So here it is. This is number one Dr. Chalice figure from Halloween 3. Pretty cool, kind of a proud moment, you know, and 12 year old Sean was watching this movie in the theater wondering where the hell Michael Myers was. Little did I know that that suave dude on screen that's bedding the young, the young hot chick uh, and saving the day, so to speak, or maybe not, uh, that one day I'd be making an action figure for him. I mean, that's kind of nuts. It's also very cool that on the bottom, special thanks, Tom Atkins and Sean Clark. I mean, that's pretty neat. <laughs> Yeah, kind of a proud moment. So, I'll always have one of these to uh, to remind me of my achievement. And it's really cool seeing Tommy, uh, both Tom Atkins and Tommy Lee Wallace, both get just such a kick out of the fact that this exists. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Collection on Halloween 3 Season of the Witch. Yes, I got a lot more Halloween 3 stuff, toys, merch, rare posters, all that kind of stuff. But this was more about the props and the uh, crew gifts and whatnot. Kind of the rare items and me gloating a little bit about the action figure. Come on. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. See you in the next one. Hey, everybody. Some people have been wondering. Sean, how do we get merch? How do we get t-shirts? How do we get horrors, hologram stuff? How do we get throw rugs? How do we get thing with two head stuff? How do we get blankets? You want a onesie for a baby, a kazoo. I don't think they do kazoos. Some people might even want Hollywood's hologram stuff. The collection with Sean Clark. Nobody wants to wear that as a shirt. Anything that they'll slap the logos on, you want to be able to get it, right? So if you go to tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction, I think that's it. Yeah, tpublic.com <laughs> backslash user backslash malfunction. You can order all kinds of good stuff. And people have been asking for Mark Beer's latest design. Mark Beer rules. He does a lot of our artwork. Pretty much all of our artwork. The skull design. See it here? We're going to make that available now. Go to the website and order it now on anything you want. Am I moving my arms enough? I hope so. You want shirts, you want hoodies, you want things like that, because you dig it. tpublic.com backslash user backslash malfunction. We appreciate you guys. Thank you for supporting the show. Thank you for supporting the channel. The more we grow this thing, the more content we can bring, the more stuff we can share with you guys. That's what it's all about, man. Being a community, like-minded people, into the same shit. Rock and roll.